Let's just start with the principle behind the PSG Equity Fund. I see that there is a strong focus on the preservation of, of capital in, in your philosophy. Can you elaborate? Yeah, um, I think if you talk to our specific investment philosophy and the way we'd look at shares, um, we've distilled it into, into three criteria, which do speak to preservation of capital, but they also speak to getting good long-term returns. And the way we'd look at the market and the way we'd look at shares in particular um, is distilled into what we refer to as the three M's. Um, which the, I introduced at mm. the top, the moat, management and margin of safety. You're going to have to take us through moat, M-O-A-T. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a familiar term. Warren Buffett uses it all the time. We don't uh, claim copyright. But really, it's just a, a, a simple way of looking at a business and trying to understand its competitive advantage. Is it a sustainable competitive advantage? Is it a, a barrier to entry that ultimately results in, in excess returns in the long run, which for us as, as shareholders is, is really what we're looking for? Do you also adhere to the three M's? We no, got we the moat, we management, margin of safety. We haven't we haven't coined a, a soundbite quite as effective as, as that. But yeah, I mean, obviously, when you look at companies, you look at the strength of the balance sheet, you look at quality of management, you look at what price you're paying, which is ultimately your margin of safety. You know, uh, what uh, what 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 can profits fall by before the company gets into trouble, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, unless you're a technical analyst. You, all companies look at basically the same sort of things. You know, can you see an opportunity in the company and how much risk is associated with that opportunity? But I must say, I, I wish we had come up with the three M's. Well, Sounds you're going to be using it from now. You must watch these boys. They're going to yeah, be taking uh, yeah. on the, the three M's in their investment strategy. Uh, Sean, just coming back to performance, your benchmark is the Aussie, the FTSE JSE All Share, and effectively you have outperformed since inception. That's the, the 1st of March 2002. You have been the fund manager since that period. In the five-year performance, that's where you've underperformed, but earlier off air you were saying that's a legacy issue uh, as a result of 2008. Yeah, I think you know, one, of the, one of the stories of, of managing money is you go through your, your ups and downs, and I think 2008 was a very specific set of circumstances. We didn't, as a house, didn't cover ourselves with glory, but there were a lot of lessons learned, and if we talk about our, our investment philosophy as it is at the moment, and the way we look at companies in the context of the three M's, it's to make sure that we deliver consistency of investment performance. And I think which you it, have which over every have. other time period. I mean, you look at your one-year performance, you're sitting at 24.5%, your benchmark at 23.2%, and then, as, as I said, outperforming over a three-year period and since inception. Last night I had this conversation raging with Peter mm. Major on the fact that the Aussie is the best benchmark because it is the toughest one to beat. Would you concur with that sentiment? It depends on what decade you're in. You know, when I was a young man, all it was easy to beat. You were just underweight resource. But shares. not anymore. But now you've got to be overweight resource shares to beat the all in an up cycle. So it is, it is difficult. But understand these are all largely cyclical events around the commodity cycle because our all is 45, 50% resource based. So in an up cycle like we've had since 2000, a resource up cycle since 2000 with a few bumps along the way, it's a hard index to beat. The, I don't know whether it's a more acceptable index, I just don't know, but by and large, in the, in the institutional space, we look at the shareholders weighted index or some derivative of that. All it means is a lower resource exposure. Just coming back to 2008, how did RMB Asset Management do in 2008? No, we all got gained there. So nobody really no, covered no, themselves, I mean, nobody one, one, covered one, themselves one, in glory. A one in 50 year occurrence with a virtual meltdown of the global economic system and the banking system. You know, it's, it's hard to predict that. It's easy with hindsight, by the way. But yeah, Everything get, is easy with hindsight. Yeah. Let's focus on a couple of the stocks that are in your, your top 10 holdings, and, and starting with Tiger Brands. Mm. Uh, recently, uh, the company coming under fire for um, their, their results, and uh, certainly people concerned about margin compression at Tiger Brands. Your, your thoughts on the company? Yeah, I, think, I think the reason that, that there are concerns around the company is, is why one had got an opportunity to, to acquire it at the levels that you've been able to acquire it in, in recent months. And we'd look at the company and we'd look carefully at what we consider to be its sustainable competitive advantage. We'd look at the market shares that it's achieved in some, some key categories and we'd say this is indicative of a company with a strong moat, in fact a, a much underappreciated moat, in our view a world class, a world -class company and it's trading at a significant discount to what we think it's worth and more importantly in an equity fund 
than other South African industrial shares, which are, you know, the, the ratings have, have been very rich in, in, recent, in recent times. So we've we far preferred to, to own Tiger Brands. 203 Rand on Tiger Brands, your thoughts, Wayne? That's fine. Look, I mean, margins are very high in some of their business units and are probably are going to come under pressure. But you, as we were discussing early on, you just have got to be positive about the long-term outlook for food. If Chinese growth continues, the long-term outlook for food does look good. And I must admit, you know, Sean, when I look at your top 10 here, other than the gold shares, it's virtually identical to our top 10. So why are the gold shares? Um, look, the gold shares aren't, aren't a core holding of ours. We just think in an equity product at the moment, um, a tactical bet on gold makes sense to us. And um, you're bullish on, on the RAND gold price? We think the RAND gold price has very solid fundamentals. And if we look at the underperformance of the RAND gold shares relative to the RAND gold price, and we look at solid fundamentals for the RAND gold price, we would make a case that there's, there's a reason for a tactical bet on gold. We're not saying these are the best long-term buy and hold instruments, with, but we think there's a, a, a case to be made in an environment where a lot of stuff on, within the JC looks quite expensive. So we think it's got its place in a portfolio at the moment. And Wayne, you've often made the comment that on a five-year view, you are very bullish on, on very gold. Very bullish on the gold price in dollars, not necessarily gold shares. I mean, our gold shares in South Africa, unfortunately, there's just way less gold around and it's way deeper than what it used to be. So there are cost issues there that are just structural in nature. A, a good quality company with management with a lot of skin in the game uh, at what we think is a, is a good price. And then the, the BAT, sell off in your commentary on your fact sheet, um, you have decided to exit your, your BAT mm. holding, is that correct? As, as a house, we, we've recently been sellers of, of British American Tobacco, having been long-term holders. It, it doesn't speak to us not liking the company. We think it's an extremely well-run company. We think it has a, a significant competitive advantage in, in the industry, in the, in the jurisdictions in which it operates. Our issue is the price. So we, we can't build a margin of safety case because when we model British American tobacco at the moment, in our view, it's starting to it still incorporates very healthy growth rates. And if you look at to tobacco in general, and you look at British American tobacco's prospects going forward, we don't see an adequate enough margin of safety. If the share price came down, we'd take another look. We just think it's quite expensive at the moment relative to what we, how we expect it to grow. Another move that, that you made, according to your, your May commentary, is that you reduced your NASPAS exposure in favor of Cajiso Media. Uh, that, can you, you take us through the, the rationale there and perhaps a little more about Cajiso Media? Yeah, I think, again, as a, as a smaller asset manager, Cajisa Media speaks to the type of, types of opportunities that are available to smaller asset managers, and we're very happy to avail ourselves of those kind of opportunities. Uh, NASPAS, we, we've liked. It's, it's a great business. Again, one doesn't want to speak badly for the business. It's just at 400-odd rand. It starts looking quite full. Um, so we've, we took a decision to reduce our exposure in favor of, of a cheaper business, again, with a strong competitive advantage in in the markets in which it operates, radio, etc., uh, buying it at a, at a decent price, we think it's a good quality holding. Are you holding on to, to NASPAS at no, these levels? No, we've sold a little bit. We've sold a little bit. We've still got a lot, but we there's also that something. sentiment that potentially NASPAS has got caught in this social media bubble with the internet oh, assets yeah, yeah. in, in China I mean, and Russia. Bubbles are a wonderful thing as long as you get out of them before they burst. Bubbles that's are what wonderful you do. things. You are reducing your exposure sold. to NASPAS. Yeah, but no, we still we still own a lot. We don't think that that's, that that's over yet. And you know the one thing about a smaller fund, you know, as as Sean said, the one thing about a smaller fund, you know, we can't buy KG Media. We, we just it's just too small.